Don't be a flake, don't run away from your feelings, babe. Don't be afraid, don't be ashamed, don't hesitate to say, hey, babe, hey, babe, hey, babe, hey, babe, hey, babe, hey, babe. And there's no stopping us right now. I feel so close to you, hey, babe. <laughs> Hey, babe. Hey, what's up, babe? How you doing? Good. I'm doing so good. You want to talk about Bitcoin? Doing so good right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, one thing is people love yeah. when we spend one episode on a topic. On a topic. Religion, Bitcoin. Yeah. But you got to understand, we're going off the cuff in every single episode. <laughs> yeah. You come you come in, we sit down, we yeah. turn on. We don't know where we're going to go. It's part of watching. Sometimes part of you're going to get a topic. Sometimes you're going to get a million topics. Dude, and here's the thing. We are... We're starting to think now, like when women's periods sync up, our brains are starting to sync up sure. because we're both wearing Mike Tyson stuff. Look That's, at this. You came in today and I was like, dude, are you kidding me? I got a Mike Tyson Christmas sweater on. and you, I got the uh, punch out. P- Mike Tyson this punch is a out. Very, two very different Mike Tyson. Yeah, two, and, and I'm, I'm going festive three months later. I love it. I yeah, love it. Even, though, even though you know people think we banked 25 episodes uh, in a row, um, we don't. With that being said, just yeah. want to give a quick, before we start off anything, Got quick it. shout out. Yeah, because Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Tampa Bay Bucks just won the Super Bowl. Shout out Tom Brady, actually. Shout out Tom Brady. Oldest player in the NFL. First time the Super Bowl was in the, the hometown of the per, the team in the Super Bowl. Super Bowl. And then we'd be remiss to say, because, we, you know, is uh, want to also give a shout out to Kansas City Chiefs. 100%. Got it. Patrick Sh- Mahomes. Patrick Mahomes, Chiefs, great kid. They did a noble job. They have a bright future ahead of them. Patrick Mahomes, best looking guy in the NFL. He's got beautiful hair. Gorgeous hair, right? I'd kill for his hair. I'd kill for his hair. Well, you got great hair too, Sal. Well, Dips. Yeah, it depends on the day, but thanks. Yeah, yeah I think it's got good hair. I, I saw uh, my first gray, like one of my first gray the other day. Really? Yeah, I have a question. Do you understand? Do you understand how gray hair works? Like, in other words, you ever like not see a gray at all? Then all of a sudden, there's a gray dead smack in the middle. No. And you're like, did that turn gray overnight, or did it start growing out of the follicle gray? And I didn't notice for the last three months. You know what? It's a good point. Never thought about it. But I'll tell you what happens to me is once in a while, I get a mystery red haired pubic hair. Yeah. Okay, you ever get I a get, red pube? I get all colors in my beard. How though? Not in my not in my pubes, but but in my beard. <laughs> Isn't pubes pubes <laughs> is a gross word it's too? It's the worst word ever. Pubic. It is, it is so bad. Yeah. Like it's totally it's totally. Pimp, bring terrible. that fact back up. You said in in fact hair doesn't actually turn gray at all. I thought I thought it said hair doesn't actually turn gay at all. <laughs> so you could be gay, but your hair will not be. Once a hair follicle produces hair, the color is set. If a single strand of hair starts out brown or red or black or blonde, it is never going to change color unless you color your hair. So then, but what but, does but that I can mean? see. So am I? Does, that, it, that didn't make any sense. Yeah. Do I? Do I? Am I colorblind then? Like, does my eyes start to see different colors no. because people have gray hair? Yeah, people have gray. And I've heard stories and 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 tell me if you've heard this, but I've heard stories where people wake up like and all of a sudden they're gray, like they have a traumatic really? experience or something weird happens and 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 a sw- switch is flipped and then they wake up and they have like their hair goes. Well, maybe this is like a really rare, crazy thing. I mean, I heard like they I, wake up and they have white hair. Right. Maybe well, I, I dude, watched the movie. I don't know. I saw Brian Regan, the great comedian no, Brian Regan. Yeah. I saw him he went, he like did. a week before the pandemic, and then he comes out and does his special on Netflix called On the Rocks, which I think is one of Brian. I love Brian Regan, but I think this is one of the best, one of the best uh, 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 specials, specials I've, I've seen in a long time. I know. So good, so clean, but his hair is fully gray. Yeah. His he, hair went full gray. He addresses it. I, I actually have always have high hopes for his specials. I watched it and he had me laughing out loud. Yeah, completely clean. Completely yeah. clean special. Um, this is a completely clean podcast. Yeah, you could do uh, it. You could do it these days. You could yeah. just do whatever we want. We're doing a completely <laughs> clean podcast, even though this I know that upsets some people. This, this isn't even <laughs> completely clean whatsoever. Yeah. We curse whatever we want. We just said Maybe in the beginning we're like, should we curse? We, we want we new. We want sponsors. We didn't really know how it worked. Yeah. So we're like, eh, if we curse a whole bunch, let's let's take some of them out. And then he then Pimp had the funny idea to, to throw in a hey babe. Hey babe. And we thought that was really funny, and we kind of rolled with it. But curse is we're not trying not to really curse. Well, no. The really... thing is though, the thing is though, after even watching Brian Regan special, and I've heard Brian Regan talk about this, and Jerry Seinfeld, I've heard talk about this. It is so hard to try to be funny for an hour. And not curse once in today's day and world. And so for me, I like it as the challenge because I got world. my other podcast, Chrissy Chaos, yeah. where I come right out of the gate, yeah. you know, 
cursing up a yeah. storm. You say you just be like, "What's up, hey babe?" Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. That's what I do. I start yeah. it out. Yeah, I get. I, I'm I'm going wild on that one. But this <laughs> one, I think that it's so. You go wild on this one too. No, but we go. Does it matter? No, we go. No, 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 no. No, the thing is, we're going wild on this yeah, one. We go wild, but, but we're going buck wild. But we are not. It's so much harder because you got to just you know, like come up with things that are like you know fun and easy to talk about and and just. just the vibe is the what, vibe. What we're going for with a vibe overall, because we wanted to like, all right, how there's so many podcasts out there. Yeah, we're just like, all right, well, what what is missing? I just feel like you know, I just I just like to come on and just have like a yeah a fun. Little this time. is a podcast my mother can listen to, which is this is this is actually is this is some of my comedy that my mother does listen to, which is a rarity for my mom. She will never listen to anything else I do. But hey, babe. <laughs> By the way, I, how about this? I was opening up the I was opening up the mail yesterday. Okay. Okay. I got to go back to Gray's. I don't want to forget. Go ahead, right, go. I was opening up the mail yesterday. Yeah. I'm genuinely opening this thing up. I get this flag. It's black and white. I start to open it up, and I'm literally thought that you, as a prank, sent me an ISIS flag. That's what I thought was the was the bit. Funny prank. I was like, oh, he he, hey babe. It was, I would open and say, hey babe, you got hey babe with an ISIS flag. <laughs> what, what is it? Look at what this thing is. Look at this. <laughs> Man, it's, it's upside, upside down. down. Look at this. Wait, Manscaped? Manscaped. They sent you a flag? Manscaped. <laughs> they the sent company you Manscaped. Doing, so this is what happens when you, what? when you have a clean podcast. <laughs> Manscaped sends you a full banner. Your balls will thank you. I, I get, like, thanks, Manscaped? <laughs> yeah. You know, thanks, but the, the balls on you guys <laughs> to think somebody wants a six-foot banner that... That, uh, I mean, what do you do with that, dude? Yeah, I I get it. I, look, look, I get it. It's a tchotchke. It's a, it's a, it's a, yeah. it's a, 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 a marketing materials. It's promotional. It's beautiful. But but what are you gonna do with a six foot banner that says your balls will thank you, Manscaped? It was one of those things where my girlfriend said when I opened it up, she said, "Please get that out of my house and take it to Sal's." <laughs> I said, "What are you supposed I to hang it out the window like yeah. people did with the flags after 9-11? Like, yeah, what that, are you supposed I, to do with that? <laughs> no, I mean we got very Manscaped patriotic. supports nine eleven. By the way, what? Yeah, Manscaped, no, they're patriots. No, not, not supports. I mean, supports it in a... Yeah, you know what I'm trying to say. They're patriots. Yeah, I'm just saying, but you remember how everybody was like flag crazy after that? Yes. And the people were just draping banners yeah. or banners off of their homes. Yeah. That's basically... What I else guess, could you do with that? I guess if you're if you're clean, if you're, if you're, if you're selling, if you're moving a lot of Manscaped, you get the banner. So we want to say could, thank you to Manscaped. Thank you. You could wrap yourself in that. That could be like a, 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 out of the shower towel around your... 100%. You know? Oh, yeah, no. My Maybe. daughter's goes crazy for something like that. Yeah. Manscaped. Any type of big object... Oh, crazy. I see what you're saying. It's just like a big, yeah, no. it's a big piece of material. She's not going so crazy. She can make a cape, a brooch, whatever. Something. Imagine she's a five year old girl. Imagine her favorite product was Manscaped. She's like, Dad, the lawnmower 3.0. You don't know about. I love the lawnmower 3.0. The 2.0. I wasn't even born. No, dude. Speaking of that, so I'm going. I'm going to California. For two You're months. You're like Led Zeppelin. Yeah. Do you Led know what that means? You don't even know what that no. means. No. Going to California was an aching in my... It's it's a song from Led Zeppelin. Shout out Led Zeppelin. Going to California, yeah? No? Yeah? Isn't that off uh, Houses of the Holy, maybe? Let's see how good I don't I think am. I know I one Led Zeppelin to. song. You know every one of them. But I just don't know that it's Led They're Zeppelin. Very, they have eight out al- nine albums. You know a lot of their songs. Are they American? Going to California. Going to California, Led Zeppelin. No, I don't know this song. I don't know. But I'm going to California. Yeah. Mine would be Biggie. I'm going, going back, back, back to Cali. Cali. Yo, Cali. big, big, 504, fly 504. That's <laughs> yeah. the beginning when he's like waking up. He's like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, Cali, he uh, says. Biggie would Biggie would have been a uh, pretty much dead ringer for COVID. I think, I think Biggie would have got COVID. <laughs> I think Biggie. I think Biggie. The, COVID. He's like what COVID wants to eat was in Biggie's body. Yeah. So, you know, but, 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 but his name's Biggie. His name's and Biggie. I think so. it targets people. Like I think they say high risk for uh, obese or more. Yeah, because you don't know. Because maybe if Biggie would have kept living, you know, it, he might have got thin. You, B, Big, Biggie keeps living. Well, he would would have. You never know. He would have went. On keto but, wasn't even invented back then. Yeah, I, Biggie. I, imagine. Could you picture what Biggie would look like if he was half his weight? No, I no. I don't know? know. Yeah, I don't know. No, I, I don't. I don't want to think about that. I like he- thinking about heavy. Whose Biggie was- voice is better than Biggie's voice? Who's cadence? There was flow? that guy rapper Shine that used to do Biggie. Shine. Oh, there was that guy but Papoose. A- Papoose. Papoose. I think the only rival voice I mean, to it's, Biggie he sounded like him at least. The only rival voice, and I'm not. And if we're talking about just music, I think you know his rap. Like when when a Biggie song comes on, you know it's Biggie. But the only rival voice in general, you're like, whoa, you have to stop everything you're doing and listen to this guy's voice is James Earl Jones. James Earl Jones, <laughs> yeah. shout out Mustafa. 
Mm-hmm. Is the only is the only other guy that I'm like, wow, his voice is crazy. Did you see he's coming to America too yet? It's coming I have to, not. Did you see America? it? I did. You did? Yeah. Uh oh. Well, you know what it is. It's like they had to. It really became something else. Like the cameos, unbelievable. Like they, I, I think they got every last person back who could come back. So that was great. And there was some really funny moments, but it was pretty long, and it it didn't exactly have the same tone as the first one. Right. You know, Eddie Murphy drove it the first one. He had this like. Like, like this naive that this naivete that he like that Good was very word, naivete. That's very charming, right? You know, he was aloof a little bit, and you kind of. But he in this one, the whole conceit is that he is a little bit more like uh, jaded, yeah, and but, so you, he pulls it pulls away from the, like the, what you loved about the first one. You know what I mean? What about this name for a loofah company? A loofah. <laughs> a loofah. Well, because it has loof in it already. Well, because you're aloof, but a loofah. I'm a loofah. These are a loofah loofahs. Yeah, I mean... You don't love it. I don't love it, only because aloof... Let me ask you the this. The definition doesn't really have much to do with a loofah. Can I ask you this? Put you on yeah. the... And you have to say... And you have to just give me an answer. You can't think about it. What do you like better? A loofah or coming to America too? Oh, I'm going to say a loofah. Wow. Oh, wait. You mean a loofah or a loofah your company? I'm talking about a loofah, my idea for the company, or a coming to America loof- too. You have to pick one. One stays, oh, one goes. I'll take coming to America, and it's no offense to you, but one is a, a movie based around entertainment, and one is just a haphazard <laughs> idea you threw at me 10 seconds ago. Now, I have a question for you. Don't yeah. you feel like all sequels are cursed? Yes. Uh, for the most part, sequels are tougher, right? The best, the only Bad good- Boys 2. Bad Godfather Boys 2. Godfather 2, which you didn't see at all. I didn't see any of them. Terminator 2. Terminator 2. The Back only- to the Future 2 was pretty good. Back to the Future 2 was good. I also thought Wayne's World 2 was good. Wayne's World 2 was good. But I. But the Dumb and Dumber sequel was not good. D- uh, the one without them or with them? The one with them. I, I didn't think the one with them was great. And uh, Dumb and Dumber, you have to understand, but here's the, the thing. The task at hand is, is immeasurable. It's the same with Coming to America, though, right. I'd argue. The task at hand with trying to remake Coming to America is Coming to America is a monumental movie. Dumb and Dumber, monumental movies. And I Dumb and Dumber Iconic. was my favorite movie of all time. I love, love, love. So I think when I watched the second one, I was like just thinking about the first one. Yeah. It's almost like a thing like, in retrospect, you should never do a, a sequel. Yeah, um, well, you know what it is? It's like, I don't know. When they, when I heard there was a Coming to America sequel, a sequel, I was, it's one of my favorite movies of all time, right? So right. I was ecstatic, but nervous. Right. And then, you know, you, but don't get me wrong. Like, there was, it was really, what's his name? Um, oh, my God, I don't want to forget his actual name. But McDowell's, um, uh, how do I? I uh, Arsenio what, Hall? No, Ars- no. Um, Jermaine Fowler? From Good Times. No, no, no. Um, the, his father-in-law. I, I mean, I know his name so well. I just, just did he pass away? So, no, 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 no. He, yeah. He's he's the owner of McDowell's. Oh, McDowell, right, yeah, right, uh, right. Uh, right. If we go to cast, there we go. Oh, Leslie Jones is in it. Tracy Morgan, great cast. John Amos, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. They had everybody in that right. thing. Wesley Snipes is like the villain. I mean, they had some really good cameos. It was it was it was fun. They had. I mean, they even got people back. Like, not even main characters. They got, like, small characters back, too. Really? That part was really awesome. And right. some people hit home runs, for sure. But overall, it was... A- Do you have to see Coming America 1 to understand Coming America 2? You, you will you will miss out. You don't, ha- you don't have to. They kind okay. of, But you'll miss out on about, no joke, maybe 50 references. Right. Maybe more. The whole, like, a lot of it's references. Because, like, what is even the premise? Like, they're all, he's already in... Like, he's just so, coming back to America? No spoiler alert, if I could help it. The, he, he lives in Zamunda. Now he's he be, he's becoming the king, right? Right. He's about to become the king, right? Uh, from his dad, he's married to Lisa. Still, from the okay. first one, they have three girls. So there's no one, there's no man to take the throne from him. He Got finds it. out he fathered a child when he was in Queens that time. Who's Jermaine Fowler? Who's Jermaine Fowler? Right. And he goes back to get Jermaine, bring him back to the kingdom, and have him take over the throne. That's a good premise. Yeah, it's pretty good actually. Yeah. That's a good. It's a good. I get it. It's good. So it really shouldn't no, be called coming premise. to America. It should be called going to Zamunda. Yeah. That should have been the name. Yeah, Zamunda. Could yeah. have been that. Fictional. I also heard that they filmed all the scenes in the castle of Zamunda in Rick Ross's house. <laughs> really? Yeah. Does Rick Ross have a pretty nice crib? Uh, uh, I, maybe the interior. Like the, the exterior looked like a, it was like kind of fake, like CGI. It was like a... Yeah. I mean, it was like a, like it looked like the Taj Mahal. Yes. Yeah. But inside, I read an article that said the in, inside was Rick Ross's. Dude, by the way, the best, uh, the best <laughs> sequel of all time, in my opinion, is Indiana Jones, Temple of Doom. That's an amazing That's sequel. That's Kalima Shakti Day. My Uncle John used to go, Kalima Shakti Day, when he used to like... Rip 
rip his hand out of it, put his hand in the guy's Take chest and rip his heart out. And my uncle would say when I would sleep over his house, because, you know, his, his daughters were my first cousin, we would have sleepovers and I would never want to go to sleep. And he would come to me and be like, <laughs> Kalima Shakti Day. If you don't go to sleep, Kalima Shakti Day. And I remember being like, like, you know, just being like, ha, ah, but like genuinely terrified inside and telling like my mom, like, laughter. yeah, like telling my mom, like, it's very hard for me to sleep there because I think Uncle Johnny's going to rip my heart out. <laughs> it's like that nervous laughter in Goodfellas yeah. where he's like, uh, what am I, a clown? And yeah, well, like, what do I amuse you? <laughs> yeah, I was like, yeah. yeah, I, um, yeah, dude. And so I'm going to, uh, we're going to get back to gray hairs. Yeah, I'm going yeah. to LA yeah, yeah. for two months. Yeah. The, the task, and I'm going with my family, the task to pack is so monumental for me. Yeah. So what I've decided to do is only go, because now I'm thinking about checking seven luggages, the kid's luggage, her luggage, my Ooh. luggage. I it's, said, it's tough traveling with uh, a baby, with too, Smile. Right? With ch children, it's so tough. She's six months pregnant. <sighs> I've decided on my end, she can pack for the kids whatever the kids want. I can hold a little Elsa suitcase and a little Ninja Turtle suitcase and her thing. For me, rather than just... Tr tr everybody's, everybody's going. going. Everyone. Everybody's going. Wow. Yeah. So, so it's me, it's me, my girl, my daughter, and my stepson. We're all going out there. For two months. So, so, so I made this decision this morning, and this is what I will do. The task has been so monumental yeah. for me to think about packing this, doing this, doing that. I'm bringing a book bag with all the socks and underwear I have, a bathing suit, a couple of T-shirts, and some shorts that I can all fit in a book bag, and that is it. Everything else that I get in Los Angeles, I will buy when I get to Los Angeles. I will Whoa. go. I will show up to the to the set of the show the very first day with the Lululemon pants on that I always travel with. Shout out, Lulu. Used to be double XL. Now my skinny mini ass is getting slightly into an XL, but it still busts at the seams. So for maximum comfort on the flight, I will do double XL. Yeah. A black champion sweatshirt because I'm Chrissy Champions. My Patagonia jacket because it folds up and can- The so, uniform for travel. We can, know it. Can consolidate into anywhere. Uh, 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 glasses- because I don't want to get COVID in my eye. Yep. And my mask. And that is it. You and that is it. I got some extra shields. I'm going to take your shield. Yeah. Hey, I'm going to, I'm going, so that's what I'm going to do. Jasmine says that's that it's bold, ridiculous. That's, that's a bold move. That's I'm just going to go. Because when do you start, when do you start filming? I land, I land and I got to, I got to start the next day, but I'm thinking. You got to bring one pair of dungarees. Maybe I'll wear these then. You gotta I'll, bring, I'll, you gotta bring one pair of dungarees. You don't want to have to run. But to I'm the talking about sneakers. I, I'm gonna have one pair. I'm gonna have the sneaker the sneakers that I want to mostly wear. Yeah. The um uh I have a pair of uh, Jordan ones like that are cool like you know like blue white and black neutral colors. I'm gonna yeah. wear those and then and then just just. Not bring anything else. But then you, you, you give yourself the task when you get out there of having to leave and go buy. Oh, are they giving you wardrobe? No. Because first season, no wardrobe department. So mm. I kind of said, like, I'll go because here's what I want to do. Here's what I want to try to live. And I want to try this. Figure I'm going to L.A. I've been watching a lot of documentaries on Buddhism. I've been meditating a lot. I've been trying to eat cleaner. I'm going to try to live for the first time beneath, you know, within my means, but not have a lot of... It, uh, not have a lot of possessions. Just kind of live with the clothes on my back. Minimalist. Minimalist. I want to. Um, I want to go Chrissy minimalist. I like that. I'm going to try. It's hard it. to do. It's hard to do, but I'm going to try. Yeah, it's all you need, though. You'll, you'll adjust need. right away. How long do you think, though? How many days am I going to last in that? Do you think by day three I'm fully in the mall texting you like, dude, I just spent $1,000 on new clothes? I, I, you're going to have to buy clothes, right? Because let me ask you this. How many um, – do you film a full episode in one day? No, right? No. So that no. You, now there's all the continuity things. So if you're filming over multiple days, you have to have that outfit. And we're filming days. two episodes at once. I hate this Apple Watch, by the way. Is it new? I just got it yesterday and to, to track my calories, but now it's constantly people are calling me, and it just keeps vibrating you, on my you, wrist. You didn't, get, you didn't get in there and turn off notifications? I don't know how to do anything yet. because it's a watch and it's have, got a little face. You also have that thing where you didn't put it secure enough so the watch is... This is like... Every, I hate when that happens, when the watch goes over here. Yeah, because I, I tried to have it one thing tighter, and I felt like it was cutting off circulation to my ah, fingers. you're in between hoops. I'm in between hoops. I got to get... in between holes. Yeah, I'm in between holes. That's what, like when you, when, when you're, when you do it with a belt, it's the worst. I don't have a good Once hat head, and I don't have a good wrist watch. Yeah. You don't have a good... Watch wrist. Watch wrist. Yes. Yeah. I need, so I'm you're, not drinking at, today. Look at this. You're in no man's land. No man's I, land. You, hold on a second. Can you see this? <laughs> can He's fingering my, lid, my wrist, mom. This is crazy right yeah. now. So, and if you go too tight, it's too it tight. Cuts, I was starting to yeah, feel like circulation on my fingers. You got to lose a little more weight on your wrist or gain weight on your wrist. I got, I'm going to try to lose weight on the wrist, but I will tell you this. What it makes it very easy is it's 39 degrees right now. 
And it's Monday, and it's Monday, March 8th, despite well, what you think. You, you, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> You'll never not have the date and weather at your fingertips with 100%. the watch. 100%. I, I, I can't. That's too much for me. Right. It's too much. Uh, I'll tell you a couple of reasons. One, I'm a person who lives in constant fear of a drained battery in all facets. I'm afraid right. of it. Not even in my laptop and my phone. I'm afraid of it in my remotes. Everything. <laughs> like anything and everything. You never know when the, when the battery, especially in, in something like a remote. Yeah. All of a sudden it's just dead. And if you're yeah. not prepared with a battery, you're done. Do you know that I travel with two double A's and two triple A batteries? Lest I arrive at a hotel in the middle of nowhere and the batteries suck because it happens more. It happens we more seriously, often than not. We should seriously do a game. We should seriously do a game and put two blank pieces, uh, to put two pieces of paper, write all the traits, uh, <laughs> all the all the the little quirkiness things of Idiosyncr Sal, idiosyncrasies. idiosyncrasies of Sal, and then write all the idiosyncrasies <laughs> of a known convicted serial killer. <laughs> And pick which one is Sal, which one is Charles Manson. Is it that bad, yeah? yeah. I mean, you, you travel Charlie, with batteries. You think Charlie Manson goes with two double A's? Yes, I do. Yeah. I think he's also he's also twisting the corners. He can't have corners. Point out things I, I the devil. I am a lunatic, right? You're a lunatic. The more you talk about it, the more I'm really, you're holding up a mirror yeah. right now to me. Yeah. Yeah. The more, yeah. No, because I actually, but no, but actually. But you know where you're getting you help get at betterhelp.com. <laughs> Sorry. Promo code Hey Babe. We're not even there yet. Promo code Hey Babe. <laughs> Does that count? Uh, yeah. That, well, was, I, that was it. That was the commercial. Yeah. Betterhelp.com. Okay. Do, you, do you think that, do you really think that I, I exhibit uh, characteristics of a serial killer there? Or do you think that I'm a smart, efficient traveler who understands how to, uh, to, to, uh, to, to, to uh, anticipate potential issues that can be big problems, but solve them in in a small way. It doesn't take a lot. You know what I do? I put the four batteries in the, my luggage in a permanent pocket. I never touch it ever again. I know it's there. Whenever I get to it, and, and guess what? You know what the best feeling in the world is? What? Going to a hotel, checking in, going up there, going like this, and the batteries and the remote are on the fritz. And I just... I, I, ju I, I just I, I usually walk over to the mirror and I just watch myself smile a little bit. <laughs> and I go like something like that and then I walk over, I take it out, I put the new batteries in. So I have to be honest with you, I've checked in and out of, I want to say, in my life, a thousand hotels. Yeah. Never once, <laughs> never. never once has yeah. the battery not worked. And if it didn't work, yeah. I would simply press zero on the phone <laughs> and ask someone to come up with batteries and replace but can it. Can I tell you my experience? Okay. My experience, it's happened maybe once or twice only, but that's all it takes for me. Also, if I get there at like two, one in the morning or two in the morning, right? right and I'm just like, I want the problem fixed now. Right. And another thing is like, sometimes I'll call down because another thing, the first thing I do when I get to a hotel, the first thing I do, I check that the air is working correctly. Right. And then I also immediately call down for three to four extra pillows. Okay. Immediately. I want them to be brought up right away. Right I don't want to wanna wait until I'm tired right. and going to bed and I forgot to call them. And then right. the, the guy at the night shift takes his sweet ass time because what's he doing down there? Playing, right, right. He's playing whatever those, right. you know, he's playing, you know, Minecraft or, or Solitaire or something. He Most doesn't likely come. one of those, yeah. yeah. And so, and that, and that really grinds my gear. So when I, when I call and they take like an hour to come and then sometimes I call again, I'm like, hey, uh, I, uh, I, I'm, I'm, you know. 216 room 216 I called about 40 minutes ago for right. like three pillows oh yeah yeah we'll, we'll get there right. and I'm just like oh you'll get here really yeah. because it's like I'm getting tired and it's like you just have to bring up a you know like I'll come down I'll that, come down I'll come down and get it so I just don't want that so if I you know the, the, the batteries don't weigh much right and then I and then I no they don't so it's really then that's not like it's cumbersome no listen it's not like I'm bringing sometimes I bring my own pillow to a, to a hotel really yeah and what's but the reason if I go that? Airbnb all my own pillows you won't use their stuff no I, it, but what about taking like do you, you don't mind car uh, checking that or you get it all in carry let me, on let me clarify um, if I do uh, if I drive to an Airbnb. Okay, if you so drive. Like a family vacation or something where that I rent sense. like a little house or something up in the Poconos or the Long Island or wherever. Like, I'll bring all my own linens and sheets and, and comforts. That I can understand. But, yeah. like, I rather, when I'm getting on a flight, I'm all about being minimal. I, yeah. I, I don't know why. Even though I know it's like I need the stuff, I genuinely rather not have the things I want for two months than just pack it and try to stick it in an in a overhead or have to go get chuck, ch uh, check uh, luggage. For, you know, even though I'd rather Avoid sacrifice too much of inconvenience cost, right? than 20 minutes of inconvenience. Yeah, but J Jazz is going to check bags. So now you're screwed. You got to go to the check bag anyway. I'm trying to get her to just live minimally too. I'm saying, listen, what do we need here? Uh, but it's not going to work nah, with two kids and a woman. No, it's, it's not, not. going to work. It's not going to work. But if she's checking, you should just check. How about this? Ever tell you about this story? Hotels, by the way, little, little uh, PSA here. When you're in a hotel, you have to not only lock the door, but lock that bolt lock on the door. Everyone in the hotel knocks and walks right in. 
They can have your key. No, e- no. Ev- people have your key. I was in the hotel room with Jasmine recently. I won't say where because I don't want to get in trouble, but whatever. I was in the hotel room with Jasmine. Three o'clock in the morning, somebody tried to open our door from the hotel. Ste- it had to be from the hotel staff, but I had the bolt lock on. So I woke up and I was like, hello? And then I, I go to uh, uh, open the door. You know, I see through the peephole. It's a it's a, a, like a maintenance guy with the hotel. He was like, oh, I'm sorry. Did you guys call for your air conditioner to be serviced? And we were like, I was like, no. Three I, in the morning? Three in the morning. Suspect. Just tried to open up. So I'm thinking, was this creep? Did he see Jasmine? At some point, know what room she's in somehow. Because I said, "Hey, did you like tell anyone your room you think it was like at that? the front desk?" And That's she's severe, severe. But then I, 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 I brought it up, and people have said, "I'm telling you, I guarantee you, there's somebody out there listening." It's like that happened to them. So you have to bolt lock your hotel room door. You cannot just lock it. What because, hotel? Because people you have to beep it. I need to know what hotel was it. Yeah, that- we could, we could, we could, we could. Really? Yep. Wow, mm-hmm. that's a known brand. Known brand. I thought you were gonna say something like I didn't know. No, same thing with the Airbnb. We're staying at an Airbnb, but make no. Uh, if there is no bolt lock, yeah. you know what I actually may bring with me a bolt lock. I have a bolt lock, and I'm gonna bring it with me. I swear Get to God, out of here. I swear to God, I'm gonna bring a bolt. You know what bolt you do? Lock. You I won't s- bring pants, but I'll bring a bolt <laughs> lock. You got one of those sliding glass doors. I like to drop a little stick in there, oh. so that it's impossible for because those doors are always broken too 100%. on the terrace and stuff. Yeah, they never work. You just you flip the thing and you go like this. It just Open. I spent. I've probably spent cumulatively, cum, 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 choke, cumulatively in hotels. I've probably spent like hours. Yeah. Going like, is this not locking? And then yeah. I twist it, and then it, the thing goes right, and then I and I pull it, and you see the thing, and you're like right. the hook, and you're like, oh, it's got to click in, there. and I lift the door up, and I push it, and then yeah. I click it, I try to catch it, it doesn't catch, and then I'm like, I got to go to like Home Depot and buy like a dowel, right, and drop it in there, drop it so in that there. it's basically gonna lock the, the the thing. Now, how many hotels have you stormed out of because of? They're just terrible. I actually have stormed out of hotels. You stormed out of a hotel? Oh, yes, I have. Really? Yes, there was a, uh, uh, I wish I remembered the name of it, Crown something or other. Uh, we, we pulled up to this hotel. I will say bus tours, I bring all my own linens and, and pit pillows on bus Yeah, because you're on the bus. Yeah. I get it. But we also check into hotels. One time we got to this hotel, uh, I'm, right now I'm not going to remember where it was, uh, but went up to my room and I sat down on the couch and I'm, I'm just looking around like, man, this I see big dust bunnies all over the floor. Then I look a little closer. There was like needles on the floor. Not like needles, like syringes, like needles, like sewing needles. Okay. Like all over the floor that I could have stepped on. And then I'm like, I look at the table and I see hair on the table. And then I, and you know, when you like go like this and you see like the light hits the table yeah. and the table had a wood like shellacking on it. Right. But you could see all the fingerprints and grease from other people's yeah. food. And I look and I see all this grease and crumbs and hair on the table. I'm like, what the hell? And I get up and go, I go in the bathroom, hair in the sink. There was, bl- and then the, the topper of all toppers, there was blood. There was like red, it, it could be uh, smeared blood. <laughs> On one of the like on one of the end tables, I walked right downstairs. I told them cancel all. I told told the guys and everything cancel every single reservation we have. I never seen anything like this in my life. And we went to another hotel. But who who else wouldn't do that? What did they say? All right, today's episode is brought to you by Peak, a super advanced plant based supplement company. Peak combines the finest ingredients with cutting edge technology to create ultra effective and high quality supplements for your body. Now I've actually taken You're this. Holding it upside Sorry. down. Sorry, I've I've actually taken this. This is awesome because you know when you take vitamins and there's vitamin C and your pee is like neon green? Yes. That's because your body's not absorbing the vitamins. You're really not getting like the most out of it. Peak... I've never, I've taken a peekaboo at my, at my pee and I've, ne- it's never been neon green. I've taken this. So that means my body's absorbing all the vitamin C. And I even went to the doctor and got blood tests. They said my vitamin C is at fantastic levels. Yeah. So this is it was also cool because it's on the go. And I know like my, uh, I have like my, my, my sister, for example, she cannot swallow vitamins. Can't do it. Like you just can't, no matter how much water, it's like a problem swallowing. So what they do is they make it into this little tasty little like yeah, squeeze like, packet. Yeah, it's a little, yeah. And you can take it on the go. You don't even need water. Dude, I love it. And, I'm going to take it right now. But a peak tea, P-I-Q-U-E-T-T-E-A dot com slash hey babe and use the code hey babe at checkout and you get 5% off. So that's P-I-Q-U-E-T-E-A dot com slash hey babe. Use the promo code hey babe, 5% off your first order plus free shipping when you purchase a bundle. And I'm telling you, this is so worth it because everybody needs vitamin C. Everyone needs their vitamins. And um, 
you know, a lot of times it doesn't get absorbed. This is so gentle on my stomach. I've never had a tummy ache. I just take this and it feels good. And you know what I like about it is it opens like a little package like this and it makes me think of ketchup. So sometimes I put it on my egg and cheese sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> Did you just take Adderall? <laughs> you look like a little kid who just got, like, took a Ritalin. Uh, you really went off on a tangent there. <laughs> no, I just, uh, I took it. So right now I have a thousand milligrams of, of vitamin C absorbing into my cells where they should be, not my pee. No, no. And it tastes good. It tastes fantastic. It's an elderberry flavor. It's really nice. I love it. Daily Immune is flying off the shelves. People are ordering more than two, so you got to stock up. Um, There's a reason Peak has over 15,000 five-star reviews, people. It's going to have 15,001 because I'm giving it a five-star. And what I love when companies do this. <laughs> 30-day satisfaction guarantee. Either you love it or you get your money back. So there's really nothing to lose. P-I-Q-U-E-T-E-A dot com slash hey babe. Use the code hey babe. 5% off plus free shipping on a bundle. Put it on your egg sandwiches. You'll thank me. Chris, yeah. can you please tell me if you know of any place that I can go if I want to get a little bit of discreet counseling? Off the top of my head, the number one place that I th I'm thinking of is better help Dot com. Well, what's that? I got to go to some office? No. What's that? I got to pay outrageous prices? Nope. Well, I got to wait two weeks to start it? Nope. You can do it from the comfort of your own home. Get a discreet, licensed counselor to hear whatever it is you want to talk about for a great price. If you put in the promo code Hey Babe, you actually get 10% off the first month. 10% off American. Go to 10%. As far as, I'm, as far as I know, I was told 10%. American money, wherever you, you could be in Islamabad, Pakistan. Right. You're still going to get off 10% 10%. American for the first month by going to BetterHelp, not health, BetterHelp, H E L P.com, promo code Hey Babe, H E Y B A B E, 10% off the first month. It's just the, it's the right thing to do. I can't believe I asked you that because you had all the information I needed. At, Sal, a lot of the times I'll see you doing things and I'll say, why don't you just ask me? Yeah. And I'm happy that on the podcast, you decided to ask me. Remember that time I was just putting a straw into an orange and you were like, you should just pour yourself a glass of juice. Yes. I should defer to you more often. Who, where, and where do you think, because like I was just like you, how many times did you see me putting the straw into the orange? A lot. How did I learn to start drinking orange juice? Betterhelp.com. Mm. BetterHelp.com is where I learned that you don't have to do that. It's just in the commercial, do they stick the straw in the orange juice? You know what? It makes sense because we could all use BetterHelp.com. Backslash, hey, babe, for 10% off. Who doesn't want 10% off the first month of anything? I want 10% off everything. They're getting me spoiled. Yeah. BetterHelp is getting me spoiled. Yeah. I, I storm into a room now. First thing I say is, I want 10% off. I, I, want 10 I don't care where I am. Yeah. If they come to, back to this show and they want to advertise and say, we love your fans so much, they've been, they've been supporting BetterHelp.com slash Hey Babe so much, we want to give you 20% off, I'm going to say, no, it's going to stay at 10. That's right. <laughs> That's right. 10% <laughs> just feels right. We're it's not just, trying to take advantage. It just feels right. BetterHelp.com slash Hey Babe. When you did they that. They apologized and they said they would clean it and try to, and I was like. No, no, no. There's nothing. I mean, there's. Blood needles, hair, and and was this food. like a nice hotel though? It was like a like a like a, like a yes, yes. It wasn't like a five star, but it was like you know you weren't staying in like a freaking off the side no, of the highway like, motel. Crown Plaza thing. Yeah, Crown I think so. Plaza. Is that the is it in Chicago? Might have been. Yeah, yeah it was by the airport. Midwest. Yeah, that, that, no, there's, there's a lot of them. I don't know which one it was. Yeah, Crown Plaza. Yeah, it was a Crown Plaza. Crown I mean, Plaza. Sorry, yeah, Crown they're by Plaza. the airports. And yeah, I'm not coming down on all Crown Plazas, but no. that one on that day, woo, you got woo, problems there. No bueno. Yeah. Yeah, dude, but you know what, man? Speaking of break-ins, too, it made me think, you got to be careful whose house you break into or who you rob. Any criminals out there who are listening? <laughs> yeah. Did I ever tell you about the story of what happened when somebody robbed my mother by... I got the story for you, too, right after this. My, house, my house got robbed while I was in it. We're going to go back to back. Yeah. We're going to go back to back right now. I got... Yeah. So my Uncle Victor, R.I.P., R.I.P. Love you. Uh, somebody was, there was a, a ring going around. Somebody was, somebody was robbing, like, women's purses in uh, my neighborhood. Oh, there was a crime ring. Crime ring going yeah. around. Go, going around robbing women's purses, right, in my neighborhood. So, like, off of the women in the street? Like, the mugging? Ripping them muggings. off their shoulder, right, and then, you know, muggings. Right. And then selling or, you know, the, the, the ring, the criminal enterprise ring was, was, being dealt with out of the back of a bodega that was on my corner. So the back of the bodega on my corner it was a hot spot. They were stealing bags and they, you know, money, selling out, whatever How it was. How did you know this? I'm gonna tell you. Okay. So 
My uncle, Listen up. my uncle used to hang out all the time in this bodega. And I had credit at the bodega because they knew that I was his, his nephew through, through marriage. So I'd go in there, get, you know, a cheese, uh, you know, sandwich and a soda. I'd say, put this on Uncle Victor's tab. And they would say, okay, because they knew. They knew that he's good for it because I'm, I'm Victor's, kid, I'm Victor's uh, you know, uh, nephew through marriage. So they were like, it's all good. Okay. So then one time. So what, they were like, okay. Okay, I'm reloaded. You know. <laughs> yeah, you sound like Scarface. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was the, yeah. So it was the guys in the bodega. So one day. Somebody steals my mother's purse off the shoulder. My mo- pushes mother pushes mugged? pushes my own mother to the ground. Steals her mug. Uh, steals her purse. She got mugged. Shows up to the house, hands bleeding from from being thrown to the floor. Oh my yeah, God, that's bag, traumatic. Bag ripped off the shoulder. My mother oh. did manage. The, and this one was shout out my mom. She did manage. In shout her, out. Shout out. She had a uh, purse on her left shoulder. She had. Our dinner, which was uh, uh, from Wendy's, in her right hand, she dropped the soda, but she was made, able to keep my chicken nuggets and a small cheeseburger. Oh, God. And mm-hmm. served it to me, and it's unbelievable. Shout out I Wendy's. didn't get the Frosty that I wanted, but... Shout out Wendy. Shout out Frosty. Shout, shout, shout out Chili. They have a nice chili on the on But the my menu. mom still, that's how you know, and I, you know, that's how you know, like, and, and by the way, today is International Women's Day, whenever this episode comes out, so I just want to give a shout out to my mother, <laughs> is is you, 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 I'll never forget that you did feed me that night, even though you just got mugged, you saved the Wendy's, you sacrificed your purse but you said you're not get, one thing you're not getting is my son's chicken nuggets with a small fry no 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 you're not getting that chicken nuggets and small fry for all purposes to you are way more valuable than her purse yeah i was like mom i don't care that you lost your social security card that means nothing to I was, me i'm nine i was gonna say <laughs> i was gonna say was she like did she handle it was she like this asshole grabbed my thing and ran i screamed but i couldn't or was she, did she come home like oh she came I home have to stay indoors from for the next five years it was one of those things she was like i just i just was mugged somebody stole my purse oh my God. and then my 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 aunt who we live with, she's like call 911 you know whatever and then, and then I was like, oh, my God, what happened? And then my mom has the Wendy's, and she's like, here, have your dinner. So so I'm like, Ugh. Yeah. So I'm eating the, you you're know. So, dip, you're like, what happened I, I'm next? like, yeah. I'm like, Mom, you, yeah. you the barbecue sauce, you know I want extra. <laughs> <laughs> you know how good Wendy's barbecue sauce is. And Two sauces, Mom. So my uncle says, my uncle says, what, you know, what did this guy look like? Whatever oh like God, that. He knows where to go. He knows where the chop shop is for the purses. So I said, so, you know, she says, oh, you know, he looked like this, this, and this. He goes, I think, I, I think. I may know what's going on here. He goes, do me a favor. Don't call the cops. I think I can handle this. Whoa. This is all, swear to God, true. So then we... Is this the guy who used to rip your heart out of your chest from Temple of Doom? No, that's Uncle Johnny. This is this is T.O. Okay. This is a different guy. I, it would have been great if he went down to the bodega and started ripping yeah. hearts out. But Uncle, but Uncle Johnny did still have his, 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 uh, his uniform from Korea that had holes and blood in it. And he said, this is what real men do. And then he wow. showed me his bloody uniform. I was like, Ooh, wow. you know, it's okay. A lot on I know. Yeah. I was like, I was like, I, I was like, I'm, I want to put on your daughter's makeup. This, <laughs> this is, you know, so, so, so he says, you know, don't, you know, just I'll, uh, I'll take care of this. So maybe an hour or two go by, right? He comes back with the purse. He has the purse. He said, listen, the money is already gone. I couldn't get the money back, but you don't have to cancel your credit cards or your license or whatever. I have the purse back. And then they're like, oh, my God, what happened? You know, whatever, all this. And he's like, ah, you know, I got the purse back. I knew who, who, who did it. So fine. Whatever. He gets the purse back. Okay. I have listen. so many questions. No, hold on. Continue. Hold on. He, he gets the purse back. <laughs> then I, don't, I just forget about this incident for, you know, years. Fast forward, I'm like late teens, early 20s. My Uncle Victor, they're talking about something. They're like, oh, remember that time when somebody stole, you know, my mother's purse? You know, that guy really got what was coming to him. So I was like, what do you mean what's coming to him? Like, I never heard of it. I thought you just got the purse back. Like, what happened? He goes, well, what happened was is I went to the bodega. New Vigilante justice? Yeah. He goes, I went to the bodega. He goes, I knew... Who had stolen the purse? He goes, he wasn't there because he just was dropping the purse off. He says, I, to get the stolen goods back, he said, listen, I know the woman whose purse you stole. It's going to be really bad. She knows that things are going on back here. So just give me the purse. You know, I'll take care of everything else, but just give me the purse. I'll give it back to her. He didn't say it was his, 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 his sister-in-law or anything like that. So he gets the purse back. That night, I had no idea, he went and got drunk with the guy who stole my mother's purse, he was sure of, gets him drunk, he takes him to our garage, which was detached from our house. He, my uncle was a welder and worked with tools, <laughs> tied him up in our garage for two days and melted the skin off his kneecaps with his welding blowtorch. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> How have you never told me this story? 
How have you never told me this story? <laughs> he blew, what are you talking about? He blew. Did I ever tell you this? What are you talking about? You just implicated your uncle's going to jail. Yeah, he's dead. Your uncle's dead. Yeah, I told you he died. R.I.P. <laughs> oh my God, R.I.P. I forgot uh, about that part. R.I.P. Yeah, R.I.P. He died. He died of cancer. He said no meds. I'm going out. What? <laughs> yeah, yeah. What? Crazy. No meds. No why? meds. My phone's watch is ringing. <laughs> why, why? Why wouldn't he take advantage of medical uh, advancements? Because he he's ripping guys. He's fucking heating wait, guys' skin wait, off their kneecaps. Wait, wait, your uncle had that in him. Yes. He, he in his DNA he could melt someone's knees. This is what I'm saying. He said he, and that's why I brought it up because he said to him, "You f- the wrong guy with wait, the what, wrong what, family." What about what about a, what about a Punch in the mouth. Nope. He said... What did that happen to a good shot in the chops? He had to make a statement. He welded his knees off? Skin off his kneecaps. Wait, wait. What's amazing to me is the fact that he then called the guy and asked it... Like, this was a whole sting operation. He went basically undercover. He called this guy and said, let's go hang out? Yes. And then got the guy drunk, brought him back to your garage. I, I need to go over this a little bit more. Yep. Brought him back to your garage, tied him up, and then welded his kneecaps? Yep. What, well, what took the heat from your the welding guy? Your uncle told you this when you were, like, late teens, Like 20s? 15 years what later. What was your reaction to your uncle... The moment he told it, did your mother know this? No. Does she know it now? Now she does. She doesn't know it before you just said this right now. Yeah. Is she? I going don't think to so. Be, is she going to be taken aback in a way that is serious? Uh, potentially. I, I can't say enough about the Buffy Comforter. My girlfriend's pregnant right now. She literally, she this is her third child. She's saying that this pregnancy is getting easier and easier every day since we got the Buffy. I'm, dude. I'm telling you, she used to night sweat. You have to understand how much she used to night sweat. I mean, it would be like literally somebody took her in the middle of the night, threw her in a pool, and then put her back in the bed. Gross. In night sweat. Gross. No more night sweats because the breeze, Buffy, regulates the temperature. And for all you vegans out there, it's 100% plant-based design. Wow. The you breeze can eat is, the sheets. It's made of eucalyptus fabric inside and out. It's softer than cotton. It naturally soothes the skin. It's earth-friendly. It's hypoallergenic. It's cruelty-free. It brings I'm wellness. telling you. This is cr- ridiculous. It's full of eucalyptus to breeze. Don't let it near a koala bear you can try a comforter in your own bed for free not sal because i haven't sent them one yet they're sending it to me if you don't love it you return it at no cost let me tell you something right freaking now buffy if you're just going to scroll down a little bit pippy buffy is one of those things where i'm telling you it got sent to the house at first i was like what is this the buffy because you're thinking buffy the vampire slayer you're thinking yeah. what does buffy mean and then it it's this beautiful bedding. I put it down. I took a three-hour nap. My kid was w- walking around the house. My five-year-old, walk- she turned on the oven. I had no idea because I'm going to sleep on the Buffy. Are you serious? Sleep on the Buffy. Uh, I thought of Buffy chickens at first. Right. No, tell from my old neighborhood. Okay, here we go. If you go to Buffy.co, because listen to me, a company like Buffy doesn't have time to put the N- M in. Yeah. It's Buffy.co, C-O, and you enter, hey, babe. That's H-E-Y-B-A-B. You ready for this? Yeah. $20 off. Twenty dollars for a Spanish speaking audience, vente dollars. Yeah, that's a, off. Andrew Jackson. Buffy.co without the M. Buffy.co. Enter Hey Babe H E Y B A B E. Twenty dollars off. It's unbelievable. Sal doesn't know what I'm talking about because he didn't get the Buffy. I did. You know that I take vitamins out the yin yang, sure. right? Yes. I yes. take so many vitamins, and yeah. I'm always switching vitamins because I'm a lot of times I'm not happy with some of them. Right. Well, now we have a new uh, vitamin sponsoring the show. I'm super excited to try. You've had it, and you really like it. It's called Ritual. It's called Ritual, and I really, really like it. It's been one of those things where I've been taking them. First of all, they have no color, so it's like they're like the, the, you know no like additive color stuff. Right. So I like that a lot. The only thing though is I was I was thinking and I don't know the answer to this. Maybe you can help me with it. I was thinking like this thing is great ritual, but it probably has sugars and GMOs and major allergens. Shut your mouth. Kiss yourself. Jump back. What like happened? James Brown said, it has none of that stuff. None of that. I swear to God, I wouldn't Ritual? lie to you. I'm sitting right here with you. I wouldn't lie to your face. Can't lie, man. No. So it doesn't have any of that. No, it has none of that. Wow. So you, you, you got to tell- believe me. You got to believe me. And here's the thing. If I go to Ritual.com, yeah. you put in promo code hey babe. Ritual.com, promo code HeyBabe, you get 10% off, but not really for that long. Well, let me just stop you right there because actually it's Ritual.com slash HeyBabe. 
Right. I don't even know if they have a promo code. It's just ritual. They might. If they hey don't, babe. don't just go to ritual.com slash hey babe. Yep. And you can begin getting 10% off for the first three months. Three months? You could cancel anytime. You could pause the subscription, subscription anytime. That's another fun thing. It's not like, oh, you got a pen, a letter with ink, calligraphy on nice card stock, and you got to mail it out. Some people, they really have, they make you jump hurdles to cancel. This you can cancel at a moment's notice. You can pause if you want, try it out, see if you like it. You know, you don't have to so my ki- commit and, and, like and that. Three months, that's a, a full trimester. My girlfriend's pregnant right now. By the time the baby's born, I'm still getting Ritual for 10% off as long as I go to ritual.com slash hey babe. Yeah, if you got pregnant today and also went to ritual.com slash hey babe today, you would see 10% savings into the beginning of the second trimester. Wow, just as the baby's crying and the ba- you it can hear the It becomes the size of like an avocado at that the point. The baby becomes the size of an avocado, yeah. God bless. God bless, love avocado. The, t- the breasts leak as well. The breasts begin to produce milk and they start leaking. And that's sometimes even when you're not prepared for it. 100%. Uh, uh, granted, you know, we diverted a little bit from ritual, but it is important to know about it's important. the gestation period and a w- woman's health. 100%. And well. there's a lot of apps and things you can do that and uh, go find the answers to some of those questions. But I think the way to find them the quickest and what you should do for the sharpest mental. I, I, I've been taking this product and I've been so sharp mentally and I felt so good. The only blemish I've had today is I ate a tuna melt that's not agreeing with you right now. But I know... Taking a ritual is going to make you feel better. Ritual.com slash hey babe, 10% off three months. I don't know what to do with myself for the rest of today. I guess we'll block his name out just to protect the. You have to block his we'll name out. We'll block his name out, but just know that I have an uncle in my family who took a welding gun and melted the skin off this guy's kneecaps who stole my mother's purse. Kidnap- That's all you need to know. Kidnapping and torture. Yeah, but he stole my mother's purse. True. So maybe it's just vigilante justice, which, which is what I said a little bit earlier. Which And the, and the, and the, and the, the, the snowflake <laughs> world we live in, you can't Dude, even do not- stuff like that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, your uncle yeah. is you you had the you had just moments ago you had the unmitigated goal yes. to compare me to Charles Manson for bringing two for bringing two AAA batteries in my luggage in case my remote dies. Yeah. Your uncle said no to meds when he got cancer, yeah. then kidnapped the man, tied hog tied yeah. him in a garage and melted off his melted flesh. And, and then you, you call him me a serial killer? And this you is a- your family you, you, you're, you're a you're serial killer adjacent. You, Dude, you, you, your uncle is a serial killer. He's a serial killer. This and this this is the same man who melted melted skin off kneecaps. Uh, didn't take cancer meds, but also built us from scratch a carousel in our backyard that little kids would come over. He took crates from outside the bodega that the guys used to sit on, cut holes in them, made a whole mechanism that spun us around me and all our little kid neighbors. He made us a full carousel in the backyard. I swear to God. Then he also made a hot dog cart out of nowhere from just the tools he had in his garage and would ride us around and we would sell hot dogs from his homemade hot dog cart. Then he made a a contraption that separated somehow grease from the floor in the hospital and grease from the floor in a burning building. The fire department bought the patent off him. He charged them no money. He could have been a multimillionaire. <laughs> he could have been a multimillionaire, and he said, "No, I just want to give back." He, this man has. Was a, he? A, was he a savant? Was he like an idiot savant? He was one of those what guys. He? He, his he was, English wasn't great. He, he was, was born and raised. He was patented. I swear, he but he didn't patent it. He just let the fire department buy it, and he didn't. He didn't do. He didn't care. He just was like, hey, he was a man of. He didn't care. He's a man of I principle. Need, okay, we need to know right now. We're asking the viewers to hashtag this: Is this guy a hero or a villain? I need to know because the more you speak. It gets more gray for me. Speaking of gray, my hair. Good. Okay. No, but I, I can't even move on from this just yet. Yeah. I mean, did you ever take yourself in your mind to to the actual moment that your uncle lived out in his garage? Like, did you ever put yourself in your uncle's shoes and say to yourself, this is what this man had to carry out? Am I capable of that? What was that scene actually like? If I was hiding in like a, you know... In like a tool shed in the in the, right. in the garage and peeking, could I have watched this? Yes. This is like you do understand what, when someone's tied up and you turn on a torch and then put it at someone's knees and yeah. melt their skin off. Yeah. Like we're making light of it. It was a long time ago, what have you? But that is a moment right. that is a very very 
It's heavy. Very heavy moment. And I, I'm almost positive looking back chronologically at when this happened, when I was eight or nine years old in the summer of, you know, like 1992-ish. I'm almost positive in that same summer. It may have, may have even been in that same week that he melted somebody's skin off their kneecaps and then let them go and told them don't come back here is when he made also made the carousel for us. So I think wow. it, for, for sure the same, overcompensating. The, the same garage that had melted right. flesh on the floor is uh, where, <laughs> where he built the carousel. That is 1,000%. Out of accurate. the crates from the bodega. Half of your childhood memories are tied directly to bodegas. Yo, the, no, no, dude. The bodega, for me, the bo I lived my life in and out of the bodega. That's what I would get my school lunch. We would get the, we'd do the grocery shop. We, I used to go to the to the uh, you know supermarket or whatever and just go to the bodega. So all the toilet paper, the paper towels, all that stuff. Bodega. Bodega. It was right on my corner. Do people know what a bodega is? That are from if New you're York? not from New York City and you don't know what a bodega or East Coast. is or East Coast, a bodega is a deli on the corner. But they not only have sandwiches and sodas and drinks, they also have household appliances. You can uh, you know a lot of times they have a real, really not good uh, deli counter. Yeah, they have a really bad deli. 24 hours, you go in there and get cat food, band-aids, yeah. and, 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 and a meat patty. And a meat patty. Yeah. And, a, you know, turkey and cheese sandwich. 40 ounce. 40 ounce. Yeah, there's some, you know. Now White they, owl. They, they, there's always an ice cream fridge. Philly. You could buy chip witches and chip ice witches. cream pops and all that you could stuff. Buy ch uh, potato chips, pretzels, potato chips, bagels, bagels, you batteries, buy gum, chocolate, candy. Yeah, you could buy supplements at the counter. You could buy you Drano. Drink. You, you could buy condiments, uh, condiments, condiments, condoms. St you could buy yeah. cigarettes at a cigarettes. bodega. You could buy you could buy the, the 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 little apple pies that they have the little coffee talk yeah. apple pies. But then you could also buy you know you could buy uh, Tide. Yeah, you, you could, could buy, buy Tide towels, to wash your clothes. You could buy paper towels, detergents, it's a one stop shop. Solutions, the deli suppress. Yeah, buy, yeah, sometimes you could buy frozen food. There, you could play the lotto, tin foil. Yeah, you could gamble. You could get a scratch off. You can run. You can run illegal gambling rings out of the back of them. You could do that. You could, yeah. You can just that's a place to to take purses that have been all, stolen. All, all usually owned, operated, and ran with one to two employees, three max. Usually from Puerto Rico or Dominican Republic, running this entire 24 thing. 7, 365. 24 7, 365, No days off with a cat perusing in and out of the aisles. Bodega cat. Wherever you go, there's a bodega cat. And they are always, there is always one of their friends drinking one of the inventory beers at somewhere in the store. 100%. Either inside or outside, somebody's drinking a beer. The history of New York City bodegas. The name bodega originates from the Spanish word, which can mean storeroom, okay. wine cellar, or grocery store. Because these shops first started popping up in the 1940s and 50s in Hispanic communities, New Yorkers as a whole took to the idea, and these small shops multiplied. I, I literally think being a part of a bodega community helped shape me for the better. Bodegas wow. are just... It was I, so great. It is, I kissed my first girl, one of my first girlfriends in a bodega, in that bodega. Wow, a lot of stuff went down My in God, that bodega. This, is it still is it still around? It's still around, but they just changed owners. We should do a, we should do a frolic Not session only from Sal, the bodega. We're taking a day trip to the bodega. We're taking where people were people where crime went down and people were tortured for it. That hundred percent. Yes, I can't believe I forgot to add this. Not should, not only is it still around, a year ago, right before the pandemic. When they were changing owners, they asked me to pay for un my uncle's tab, which <laughs> from he's dead while he was dead. While yeah, because they were like they're closing out their books <laughs> yeah, and they had all these tabs. But he's dead. Yeah, but no, I know, but they still he still no, owed money. They had his tab after he died. They, they, so you were like, I got to break some news to you guys. And he died like six or seven years ago. I swear to God, I wish I had a picture of this. I swear to God, they had it written on a piece of paper yeah. that was this must have been the same piece of paper sure. from the 90s. It was all yellow and saying all his things from like 1991 to 2019. His entire tab, $300. No way. In 20 years, all I had to pay was $300 <laughs> and he was clear. That's how cheap things are in the bodega. <laughs> he just bought- Quarter waters in the bodega. <laughs> quarter waters. I just say 20 years of just quarter drinks. That's 25 it. cent quarter waters. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, that you would open them up with your teeth and it was a, how much sugar if I it's would, just it's a hundred percent if I'm logging in a quart of water to my fitness pal today w what am I in for 300 I, I think you're in for a couple well they're, they're probably the quarter waters were probably six ounces yeah I call them quarter drinks it's it's, it's, it, it's straight up high fructose corn it's a combination if you're not from from the US or the East Coast you don't know what we're saying when we a quarter water it's a combination of water food coloring sugar and sugar sold as a drink in small plastic bottles for 25 cents quite possibly the worst thing for your body and the environment yeah, it was straight up plastic there wasn't even a cap you just yeah. you plunged your finger through a 
a piece of foil on top. You were like, I, oh, you peeled it? I would do it with my oh, teeth. You bit it. You I would open it, yeah. it up with my teeth. I would, and then would you peel the whole thing off or would you tuck it in all around the side? I would bite on my teeth and then I'd suck out the juice. Those, remember Mondo Ice Pops? Yeah. Mondo Ice Pops, the other thing. And then I don't know if you had this. We used to have the iced tea in the milk cartons. We used to call them Bushwick Snapples because Bushwick was the bad area. So we would say, These, this is like, you know, Snapples a dollar, but this iced tea in a milk carton is 50 cents. So we call it a Bushwick Snapple yeah. and it would give you instant diarrhea. Instant diarrhea. Well, what happened was Snapple got, uh, got you know, all like, oh, we're going up to two bucks for a glass now. Yeah. And they went from 20 ounce bottles to 16 ounce bottles. Right. And Arizona was like, hold the presses. I'm going to give you a 24 ounce can for 99 cents. I'm going to stamp that right on the can. So right. nobody could do any funny business. Right. So this is going to be 24 ounces. Uh, for 99 cents. And they came in and they took a lot of Snapple's Do you remember the share, Snapple lady? Do you remember the Snapple yeah, lady? Yeah, when, Wendy? What was her name, the Snapple lady? Wendy. If you could do an interview and you could only do one interview, would you do it with the Snapple lady, Yolanda Vega, or the Dunkin' Donuts munchkin? Time to make the donuts guy or the Micro Machines guy who would talk really fast. Micro Machines. Is, is the Snapple lady still with us? Wendy she, Kaufman? Is Wendy Kaufman still with us? I love Wendy Kaufman. What, 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 she was just she's just an actress that got the, the that got the role of the lady. What a gig! Born in 1958 in Woodmere, nice nice old Long Island girl. Yeah, 62 years old. Good for her. Good for. I wonder if she really dude. Do you know that the guy is she, she sick of Snapple? She might be sick of Snapple. Sick of it. She probably never even had Every a sip flavor. of it. The Verizon guy's sick of Verizon. He works for Sprint now. That's right. Do you know this? <laughs> you know the guy, the AOL guy. You've got mail. Yeah. You know that. You know that guy's story. No. Are you ready for this? Yes. I was doing a road date. Half sold road date a couple of years ago in Cleveland. I'm doing daytime talk show mm. in Cleveland at eight o'clock in the morning. The camera guy, the cameraman working for the his name is Elwood Edwards. The cameraman who was working for the local Cleveland like news affiliate is the AOL You've Got Mail guy. Come His on. wife was working for AOL in the early 90s or whatever. She said, oh, we're trying to come up with a thing for AOL Mail, like a little voice thing. And he said, oh, I'll do it. Puts his voice in a cassette, cassette tape. You've got mail. Gives it to him. Didn't get Nothing. a penny. Oh, Google, come on, Google AOL. El, Elwood Edwards works for Cleveland Local News. Come on, AOL. It says he's an Uber driver. Now he's an Uber driver. Uh, you got to be kidding me. Yeah. You got you can't give this guy a little bit of money? I believe it, dude. Not a not a penny. I was like in Cleveland he right. said, "Yeah." So, there's a couple things we need to do. Yeah. I need to do hashtag Hey Babe Hero or hashtag Hey Babe Villain. Okay. As far as how you perceive his uncle. Is he a hero or a villain? Right. Hashtag Hey Babe Villain, hashtag Hey Babe Hero. Right. Okay. Another thing, hashtag Hey Babe AOL. How about giving Elwood Edwards some of the money that's coming to him? Yes. Hashtag. Hashtag. Also, yeah. do you guys know that Big J uh, auditioned for the Verizon guy? Big J no. Oakerson did? I didn't even know like that. Like the actual Verizon guy. He was supposed to be it, and I, I don't know. He didn't get it. And he really? Always, he always hate watches that. I had no. How did I not know that? I didn't know that. There's well, there's a lot of things you don't know about your friends. I know. There's a lot of things we don't know about you. That's right. <laughs> I'll tell you another. I didn't know you stacking batteries. Birth control. Birth control. Um. Okay. So I still can't get over your uncle. So did you? What was your mom's? So your mom doesn't know. I would love to film a reaction video. So can we Patreon? Patreon. A, a reaction video to your mom watching this segment and finding out that your uncle is a tort that your uncle was a torturer. My mother, my mother's probably the type of person she wouldn't even believe it. She said, "No, you're making that up for effect. That's not true." And I, and unfortunately, we that's can't talk great, to my uncle. That's a great reaction, anyway. We, we can't talk to my uncle. If she brushes it off he's like not that. Not with us. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Do you think a purse was ever stolen again? Do you think that guy ever stole a purse again? I, if I'm being honest with you, I think that man probably left the country immediately because all the break in, all the robbery stopped. Wow! They all stop, dude. And how about uh, r just real quick, his his um his daughter. Go faster, please. Uh, oh yeah, sorry. His his daughter, yeah. who <laughs> is is great, great great person, cousin of mine, great great great. Uh, somebody tried to break into the house. Somebody oh. tried to break. What did she do? What did she do? Did she wear their skin like a like a costume? No. How about this? Somebody tried to break into the house. We were maybe 18, 19 years old. I'm coming down the block. I, I'm coming down the block with a sandwich. I'll never forget from the deli on a corner called Fetcher's. Shout out Fetcher's. Shout out Fetcher's. Also a great bodega cat. One time he threw up on my sandwich and I didn't realize until I had already eaten cat vomit. But whatever. <laughs> Fetcher's, great, great place. I'm coming down with sandwiches or my lunch from Fetcher's. I see police and a fire truck outside my house. I start sprinting. I don't know what's going on. I see a man because the way our uh, uh, house was set up where this one of the side windows led into our driveway. I see a man laying down 
with what looks like two broken arms in the driveway. And I said, what is, like, what's going on? I go up there. My cousin says, somebody just tried to break into the house. I threw him out the window. So somebody tried to break into the house. He broke both of his arms on the land, was being arrested, was being, like, handcuffed with two broken arms, screaming in pain. My arms are broken because he had just tried to break into our family's home. And my cousin, who was 18 or 19-year-old girl at the time, threw him out the window. Mm-hmm. So, so sometimes it's so hard for me because, you know, especially like moving forward in the world and progressive and all that stuff. Sometimes when I hear like even like, you know, on the news or like, oh, this woman felt uncomfortable around a man or whatever. And, you know, you feel for all that. But the family I come from, like my cousin was throwing burglars out the window. Wow. So sometimes I'm like, I don't know, like, is my cousin too crazy? Is my cousin too hard or are they too soft? What's the happy medium? Yeah, that's, like, that's you know? That's why, you know what else I like? The word burglar. I like, all, like, I mentioned before, dungarees. I bet you half of our listeners don't know what a dungaree is. They don't know what a dungaree is. Or a vestibule. A I vest- like saying that over the hallway. You got a great vestibule. <laughs> yeah, I got a nice foyer. Yeah, you got a nice foyer. No, but dungarees, dungarees I like. Dungarees, I never stop saying it because it's so much more fun than jean or denim. One of the best. A dungaree. Best times you can have is wearing dungarees, eating dunkaroos inside of a Dunkin' Donuts. That's a, that's a great day. Dungaree. I, I say it all the time. I'll go into a store and be like, hey, where, where are your dungarees? You know what's unfortunate about the dungaree? What? Is it's probably going to go out of style because of athleisure. I mean, how much more comfy one are we wearing athleisure than we are dungarees? I mean, we're both wearing dungarees now in Mike Tyson sweatshirts. Yeah. But I feel like the athleisure. A huge, huge market share. We had we covered this in the previous episode, but you, I, I'm curious right. if you guys, after Home Alone, ever set up stuff for potential robbers. Interesting. Well, because speaking of Home Alone, yes, and that's another reason why I'm not packing all these things because I don't want it to be like I'm freaking Kevin McAllister with all these bags looking for my family and kids. I'm like, we all have, we're all traveling with backpacks so I don't get Kevin McAllister. I don't Kevin McAllister Ke- never made it to the airport. He did not carry home bags. He made it to the airport in, in Home Alone 2, which is another good sequel. 2. Home Alone 2 was an okay sequel. Home Alone 3 sucks. Home Alone 3 should be erased. I'm, I'm, sorry, if it ever, I'm sorry to everybody involved. It should be. But nobody needed it. Nobody wanted it. It didn't do a good... And you know what? I know everyone was well-intentioned. 100%. It, it, I'm, not, I'm not really coming down on you. We all make stuff that sucks. You yeah. Know? But that was an ill-conceived... That was an ill-conceived sequel. Yeah. Home Alone, Home Alone 2. Home, Home Alone 2. I, 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 Home Alone 2 was more of what we loved, but he got a little bit older, so I got I felt a little bit less in love with him. Right. And then also, I love New Somebody York. Somebody clipped that exact statement. <laughs> 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 Take that out of context, clip it. <laughs> you can make t-shirts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, but, but um, you know, if I was a robber, a robber or a thief, I'd insist to be called a burglar. Yeah. Burglar sounds it's more romanticized. I, like burglar. I, I feel like a burglar is reserved for more of a high-end criminal, like a, a, a jewel. Th- well, I guess that's a jewel thief. But a jewel burglar. A jewel burglar. Yeah. I'm a cat. A cat what? Cat burglar. My uh, house is burglarized. In the night. Yeah. yeah, my house is burglarized. I'm burg- yeah, because it's like, you know, you want them to be in like black and white pinstripes. A, bur- a burglar sounds less offensive and more of an art form. Right. Like I could say to you, you know, I'm a, I'm a professional burglar. Yeah. And you'd be like, whoa. Whoa. Uh, t- tell me about it. If yeah. I tell you like, I f***ing rob houses, bro. You'd be like, this guy, I don't want to get mixed up with him. Yeah. But if I go, if I'm a burglar, you'd be like, oh, uh, nice guy. Burglar. Uh, and listen, yeah. Yeah, he's, he's a burglar. Burglar yeah. versus thief versus robber. So what, what, what are you saying? The, well, burglar versus thief versus robber, it's all the same stuff. I mean, I guess. A, a burglar is, It says a burglar is someone who steals by breaking into, entering illegally, a building. For example, someone's home. A thief is someone who steals something without being noticed. For example, a pickpocket. So oh, you wow. have to break. So it has to be a breaking and entering to be a burglar. So a thief is a thief is probably not even as serious as a burglar. Gypsies, tramps, and thieves. That's more and more forgivable, you know. Right. Thieves. Yeah. I. Yeah. Burglar. I, I've never been. I've never. I don't think I've ever had anyone steal anything from me. Babe, I. Okay, I used to bartend, right? right? So I used to have very weird hours. I used to get home at like 4, 5 in the morning. Mm-hmm. P- probably home sometimes by 5, not in bed till like 6. Right? right? right. That was my regular... Did you I have used- a snack and go to bed or would you just go right to bed? I always had a snack and it was a lot of times it was the same exact snack. Which was? I remember for like 6 months I got the same exact thing. I used to go to M&M Bagels. I used to get an everything bagel with cream cheese. I used to get the cupcakes with the, the thing. Oh, the um, hostess, the hostess cupcakes, cupcakes with yeah. the swirl with with the cream in the middle, and a and a and a, and a pint of Tropicana, and that's you, what you would go to bed on. Yeah, yeah. Oh <laughs> man, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That was like my favorite. 
Right. Well, I mean, I didn't do it every day, but that was like when I was like, when I worked till five and I was like defeated, yeah. I was like, I'm going, I'm going that thing. But you'd have a nice sleep with that. Yeah, but that was like 4,000. We talked about this earlier. Like, yeah. If you don't really care to get knowledgeable about calories yeah. and you don't realize what you're putting in it, that's like, a, that's like, that's like no joke. That's probably like 2,500 calories at six in the morning right before I'm going to bed. Right before you go to bed and then yeah. sleep and then wake up and probably the first thing you'll do is eat and wake up. So you, before you even start your day, that day you're probably at four. 4,000 calories. Right. It was, yeah, and yeah. It's, it's all sugar and carbs. Right. All sugar. Right. Orange juice, cupcakes, and and bagel. Oh, my just God. Just terrible. Terrible. <laughs> just, like, like I was going to say before, if you drink a quarter drink every single day, for like you'll die at like age 30. 100%. <laughs> yeah. 1,000%. It's, it's, like, it's like acceptable poison. It's poison. It, no, it, there's it, no it's, brand names. It's no, just no. coming out of a somewhere. For, you know? Yeah, no, it's, it's poison. Just, it's, just, it's just shooting different colors into poison. Yeah, it's poison. That's all it is. <laughs> and we feed it to children. Like, as an adult, you don't have it anymore. Well, that's it's a, poison for children. Well, that's the thing with sugar. That's the thing with sugar. Like, there's a big story. It's sugar or, like, rewarding people with sugar. Like, I think it's one of those things, like, how, like, there used to be commercials for cigarettes and, oh, I think sugar is going to be a thing that we look back and be like, why were we giving our children that? It's like, the, you're giving them a, a, you're giving them a thing that's going to cause an, health an issues. An addictive poison. Yeah, you're they, giving them poison. Yeah, they said it's worse than salt. But what's better than a Butterfinger? Nothing. Can you let, ever that's lay your finger off it? That's the whole conundrum. Yeah. Yeah. So wait, so what happened? So you, you come home uh, at 6 a.m. So I used, to, I used to get up at like 1. Right. right. So I come home, I go to bed. I'm in bed. Business is huge. By the way, you you don't understand how bad I have to pee right now. It's actually like indescribable, but I'm just going to keep drinking the water. Do you want to do like editing magic, go pee and come back? I've committed this to you. Yeah. I, I'm here with you. Great. I'm listening. No problem. I'm in the zone. I'll try to get this story done 20 No, I want you to take minutes. your time. Okay. That's it. Okay. Great. Um. I'm sleeping, right? So I hear, oh, I hear, I used to have blackout shades and everything because, like, I couldn't, you know, since I was getting going to bed when the sun was coming up, I right. needed to black everything of course. out. So I black out, I'm in, I'm in the black, and I hear. Blackout matters. Yeah. yeah I, hear, I hear boom, 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 boom. Yeah. I jump up and I'm like, what the fuck is that? Right? right. So it's pitch black. I get up, I'm stumbling to the door, and I go, hello? And I hear my landlord upstairs. He goes, Sal, it's Dan. Open the door. He was a New York City detective, and he was right. like a big guy. Right. We were good friends. He was like a cool dude. And I was like, what? And I, cr I cracked the door, and I go, and the, the, like the sun comes in. I'm in straight up pajamas. Do you wear pajamas to bed? No. Ever? No, but I do sl I sleep in my boxers. I never wear pajamas. I did boxers and, and, and a T-shirt in my life. Then I did boxers and like pajama pants yeah. and, and a T-shirt. But I, I got to tell you. It's pajama. It's, well, at least a pajama pant. Yeah. It, it, what it does is it puts you in the mood for bed or for comfort. Yeah. It's it's a it's this thing in your mind. I throw on a pair of my pajama pants yeah. when I'm like nearing bedtime. Yeah. And my whole mood shifts. Yeah. My dad, my daughter, just a, a week or two ago, she was wearing pajamas and she asked me, she's like, why don't you wear pajamas? I was like, ah, pajamas are, you know, really kids just wear pajamas. And she said, you don't know how to have fun. And then she went to bed. Who did that? My daughter. My five-year-old daughter. She said, you don't know how to have fun. Sometimes during a holiday or a particularly chilly night, Maybe in the winter, I'll also throw on a pajama top. Wow. That I feel like twas the night before Christmas. I feel like that guy. Yeah. But yeah. I, but it's it's fun. It's cozy. I'm yeah. all about cozy. No, you're the most you're one of the guy you're one of my friends who's about comfort the most. I would say you're li you about that comfort life. I'm about it. More than anybody else I've ever I'm met. About that comfort life. You about that comfort life. Yeah. T shirt. Yeah. There you go. So go ahead. I and then cracked. we also have to talk about the gray hair. That's right. Or we could do it at Patreon. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Coming soon. I crack it, comes in, I go, I literally had like, I probably had like spittle, I had my hair. I, yeah. was, I remember the pajamas I was wearing, I was actually wearing Corona pajama pants. Oh, really? And they were 100% yellow with like the Corona logo all over them. I, I was going to say, you could see, you saw into the future. Yeah, I got, <laughs> I got, the, <laughs> I, got I remember, I got them at Models. <laughs> Yo, gotta go to Mo's. Yeah, which RIP Models closed down. It's all closed. Bankrupt, right? Models. Yeah. All of it? That, that's more that, and that's an East Coast uh sports apparel store. Yeah, that that was like Yankees all the way. That's Yankees like all they, the way. I feel like they were ingrained in like always them and Oots or Uts chips. Oots and W B Mason. W B Mason. All, those who big, but? all the Yankees. Yeah. Let me ask you a question. Uh, who but W B Mason? I don't know. That was their slogan. Who? Who? Who, who but, but W B Mason? Uh, I can't think of anybody good, else who could have been. Is it a good been. slogan because we still remember it or a bad slogan because I never knew what they meant? I was going to say, I can't tell you to this day what W. Mason even does. I what kind paper of paper products. What kind of company is it? I don't have any uh, idea. Who, who are you going to get your paper products from? But w us. And that's a weird slogan because like there's so many people to get paper products from. I know. I'm like a uh, staple. Yeah, I can just get paper products from like a hundred different people. Yeah. 
But I guess who but you guys? Who but yeah. Office supplies. Office supply. Who but W Mason? It's like, okay, Office Max, Staples, like, yeah, you know, yeah, things yeah, like that. Things of that everybody, nature. Everybody, yeah, the you bodega. Know? Yeah, just the section in Target. Like, yeah. whatever, like, you know what it is. But um, no, but shout out to W Mason. So, <laughs> so, by the way, pajamas, just real quick while you yeah. talk about this. When did it start? Where everything else starts? India in the 18th and 19th century. British influence on the wide Western world during the Victorian era. It was uh, uh, the, the worldwide use of the word pajamas um, uh, was, was from India. Pajamas were first introduced in Britain in the 17th century, originally known as moguls breeches, <laughs> but they only became popular as loungewear for men from about 1870. <laughs> so from now on, we will call them my moguls breeches. Yeah, my moguls breeches. Yeah. <laughs> I'm getting tired. It was a long day. I'm going to throw all my mogul's breeches and 100%. head out. Well, you deserved it. You're the mogul. So pajamas have only been around for 150 years. That's it, dude. What, what were people wearing for pajamas before pajamas? I guess you just... I mean, you just they, go to bed in kelp? Maybe they would just go to bed. But like, I think like a, a burlap just, sack? Like a so, this is one of my softer sacks. Yeah. yeah. Butt naked. Well, no, before they... Because I, when I think of old school pajamas, it's like they got the hat on. What about yeah. the pajama hat? How stupid... That seems unnecessary. The the, why would you have the pajama cap? Are they sleeping in the cap or is the cap just a matching accoutrement for when you're walking around, traipsing around the house with the gown on? I think that it's got to be just for walking around. Oh, here we go. They were originally worn by men and women to protect against cold nighttime temperatures. Men may also have worn them to cover their bald heads in the name of dignity. You don't have to cover your bald heads anymore. Keeps.com, promo code Hey Babe. That's right. Today, <laughs> sleeping caps aren't commonly worn by men, and many women choose to wear a sleeping cap for hair health rather than warmth or fashion. I've never seen a man in my life, man or woman, wearing a sleeping cap. All right. That's uh, Hey Babe sleeping caps merch. So merch is that store. what we'll do? Mark it down. Mark hey it babe down. sleeping caps. Yep. Hey Babe sleeping caps. I would love people to say. You know what it is? Uh, I think that's when maybe they didn't have heat. Right. You know, because they say this is big. The top of your head is big for for temperature escaping and everything. Yes. So the, I get that. But I, or at this moment in time, I wouldn't want to sleep with a sleeping cat. By the way, and I think I probably know the answer to this, but I guess people would just also, in the middle of the night, just have to sleep with a bucket next to them. Imagine being diabetic in the 1700s. You're going to go to the outhouse and maybe get killed by a bear or a random enemy going through the lands just to take a piss. Right. You probably just would pee or shit in a bucket in the middle of the night, right? Wow. Yeah. This has been Hey Babe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, we're over, right? I, no, I, but it I, doesn't I matter. I started the story about the... <laughs> yeah, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. Uh, can we I start doing really that more, though? On the gray where, hair we just, where we just nail it. We <laughs> yeah. just done it. Like, just randomly. And then whenever one of us says it, we got to stop. <laughs> yeah, we got to stop. Got it. The episode's got to stop. So we'll pick it up in the next episode. You want... What do you think, Pip? It's a cliffhanger. It's our first ever cliffhanger. Let's do it. We're gonna. That story's gonna okay. be picked up on the next. Yep. So I'm, I'm dead asleep. It's pitch black. <laughs> it's pitch black. I went to bed at six in the morning. I'm in Corona pajamas. I stumble to the door. I knock over a couple things. I, I crack the door. I say hello, and he goes, "Sal, it's Dan. Open the door." Dan is my name. My upstairs landlord. He's a New York City detective. And I heard boom, 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 and I didn't know what was going on. This has been Hey Babe. Yeah. Every Thursday, 11 a.m. Eastern Time. <laughs> Patreon coming soon. You can check me out on my other podcast, Christy Chaos. Uh, YouTube.com slash Christy Comedy. All ChristyComedy.com for all my dates. Appreciate all the support and love. SalvoCanoComedy.com. Other, other podcasts on this network is called Taste Buds. Check it out. No Pressure Network. That's what we're about. The No Pressure Network. Uh, uh, don't be a fake. Don't be a flake. Don't run away from your feelings, babe. Don't be afraid. Don't be ashamed. 